In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a stop loss on the LBank spot market. This video is a segment from my LBank step-by-step beginner tutorial. So if you're interested in seeing the whole video, I'll leave a link for it in the description down below for anyone that might find that helpful. This video is not financial advice and is for educational purposes only. If you get some value out of this, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe. Let's get into the video. To set up our stop loss on the spot market, we'll come right up here to trade, then we'll click on spot trading. Then we'll need to choose the market type and pairing that we wish to set up a stop loss on. And you'll find your market types and pairings right over here on the right hand side. You'll see I'm currently set to USD. This means all these pairings down below are quoted in Tether. So if I set up a stop loss using these pairings, I'd be receiving Tether if my stop loss gets hit. If I was to click right here on USDC, now all these pairings are quoted in USDC. So if I set up a stop loss using these pairings, I'd be receiving USDC if my stop loss gets hit. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and choose USD and let's go ahead and do Ethereum versus Tether. So the first thing we need to do is come to our order panel and click right here on stop limit. Now we need to choose a trigger price. This is going to be a price point that triggers L bank to place a limit order to sell our coins. So let's head on up here to the chart and what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just get rid of this horizontal like so. Let's imagine that I just bought some Ethereum on this candle right here. And maybe I want to set up a stop loss right here to protect myself from the possibility of Ethereum rolling over and moving to the downside. Maybe I want to use these wicks right here. So for the purposes of demonstration, I'll come over here to my drawing tools. I'll grab a horizontal line and I'll go ahead and mark somewhere out just below those wicks. Maybe something like this. Good enough for this demonstration. Now we can see a price point on the Y axis of the chart coming in at 1734. So let's come down here to the order panel and on the sell side, we'll type that price point into trigger price, 1734. If the price of Ethereum decreases to 1734, that's going to trigger L bank to place a limit order to sell my coins. So now I need to choose a selling price. So let's head back up here to the chart and let's just imagine that I want to set a selling price below these wicks right here. So once again, I'll grab a horizontal from the drawing tools like so, and I'll go just a little bit lower than those wicks, maybe something like this. Now we can see a price point on the Y axis of the chart coming in at 1,678. So we'll come back down here to our order panel and on the sell side, we'll type that price point into selling price. So we'll go 1,678. So if the price of Ethereum hits 1,734, L bank is going to place an order to sell my coins for 1,678 or better. So there's a couple things to know about this. The first thing is, is I like to leave a little bit of breathing room between my trigger price and my selling price. If you set your selling price too close to your trigger price or at the same level as your trigger price, you run the risk of price action getting below your selling price before this order is placed and filled. If that happens, you won't actually be selling your coins. Your order will simply be placed on the order book to sell and you'll be waiting for price action to bounce and come back up to your price point before that order fills and executes. And there's no guarantee that that will happen. The second thing to know is if your trigger price gets hit, L bank will move to sell your coins for your selling price or better. So if there's a better price available on the order book than your selling price, your coins will sell for a higher price. So you can always feel comfortable leaving a little bit of breathing room between these two price points. That way your coins sell if your trigger condition gets hit. You just don't want them to be too tight. L bank is lightning fast about getting these orders placed. It's just something you don't want to leave to chance. At least I don't. So now that we've chosen our price points, we'll come back down to our order panel and on the sell side, we'll choose the amount we wish to sell if our stop loss gets hit. And for this demonstration, I'll just use the slider bar. I'll slide it up to 100%. Then when you're ready, click on sell. Then you'll get your order confirmation pop-up window where you can confirm the details of your stop loss. So in my case here, if the price of Ethereum hits 1,734, my coins will be sold for 1,678 or better if there's a better price point available on the order book when my trigger price gets hit. Basically what I'm telling L bank is that I want to get at least 1,678 for my coins if my trigger condition gets hit. If everything is what you intended, just simply click on confirm. 
Now we've placed that stop limit. And to quickly recap, if Ethereum was to come down and hit my trigger condition right here, my coins are going to be sold for 1,678 or better if there's a better price point available on the order book. We can find the details of our stop limit if we come down here to open orders. And here's where you'll see the details of your stop limit order. At any point, if you want to cancel it, you just come over here under action and click on revoke. Now, as you can see, I just removed my stop limit order. As easy as that. And there you have it. That's how you can set up a stop loss on the L Bank spot market. If you got some value out of this, don't forget to leave me a like and hit subscribe. Also, feel free to check out my other L Bank tutorials, which I've put together in a playlist on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for coming by and checking out this video. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one. And until I do, have yourself a powerful day.